Welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this simple athlete testing dashboard that you can use to display fitness testing results for your athletes or clients. How this works is I'm going to have a drop down menu where I can select any athlete that I want to look at and based on the team average, their own results, it will calculate a score for them and provide them an athlete performance graph. So as you can see, I can select any athlete from the group and it will automatically update the graph to be their results. This is going to be really useful for communicating testing results or any type of data that you may be collecting to your athletes and clients. So let's get after it. Okay, so in order to get started on this athlete dashboard, um, we need to start with some data. And here I have a table that I've already created and it just has some testing data that I have lying around from um, a testing session that I ran with a high school class one time. But essentially what we're looking at here is we ran them through um, two FMS screens. So we went through the FMS push up. So these values here are gonna be either a one, two or three. We did a counter movement jump on a jump mat. So these values are gonna be in inches. And then we've already pulled out what the maximum counter movement jump is. So we'll, we will be referencing that. And then we did a 10 meter sprint. So these values are in um, seconds. And then we've already pulled out what the best 10 meter is. And then they performed a beep test. So these are the beep test scores. And then we've converted that to an actual score value. So in order to start to create our visualization, um, I need to run a, a few stats on this data that we can then reference when we create our dashboard um, and create our scoring system. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is actually create a class average um, or really <laughs> I shouldn't say class average. This just happened to be a high school class, but actually just an average of different uh, metrics in this um, table. So the, the ones that I'm going to take an average on are the counter movement jump best the zero to 10 meter sprint best, and then the beep score. So the way that I do that is I've just put some boxes below um, where it says average, and I'm just going to type in equals average, and then open that up, and it's really easy. Because I've already formatted this at a, as a table, and I've shown you how to do that in previous videos, I can really just select this whole column, and we know we've selected the whole column of a table, because if you look, it'll sell, say TBL underscore athletes, that's what I've named it. And then we know it's the column because the CMG best is in square brackets. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me the average for that column. So I'm going to do the same thing over here for the 10 meter best equals average. And I'll select this column here. And then I'll do it for the beep test score as well. And I will select this column here. So now that we've kind of collected all of the averages, um, the, the next thing that I need to do is I actually want to take the standard deviation of these values because when I go to create the athlete dashboard, what I'm going to use to make the graph is actually a z-score. And a z-score is um, the athlete's score minus the mean over the standard deviation. So I'm going to need to calculate the standard deviation and it's pretty easy to do. Um, there's actually a function in Excel for that and I'm just going to hit STDEV and then open that up and just pick again the column that I want and hit OK and it will automatically calculate the standard deviation for me. And so what the standard deviation is, is it is just how kind of spread out the data is and then we can use measurements of standard deviation to kind of normalize values um, of different of different types so that when we do our graph, it's gonna make things look a little bit better. So these are all the, the simple stats that I'm gonna to need to take. I'm just gonna decrease, oh, I'm gonna do it a little bit at a time. I'm gonna decrease the, the um, decimal places on these just by highlighting it and using the decimal button. And we'll do that the same thing for the standard deviations. So I'm just gonna bring them down to two decimals. So that's all the stats that I'm gonna to need to take on the actual data. When you are typing in your data, important thing to name your table. So if I click anywhere here and go up to table design, I've already named this TBL athletes. 
and that just helps me know what I'm referring to when I go to write some of my formulas on the next sheet. So for the video visualization, what I've done is I've actually just outlined a box and then typed in some things down the side that says um, the different values that I'm going to want to be pulling out. And then I have some columns where I'm going to pull out the athlete test, the team average, and the score. And what I'm going to do is have a drop down box up here where we can select the athlete name. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go to select that and I've just highlighted it yellow so we know where that is. I'll go to data, data validation, and I want to use a list and I'm going to use an indirect function. So it looks like this equals indirect. And I've used this trick in a lot of videos and then anything inside of an indirect function, um, I'm going to need to put in quotations so that I turn it into um, a name. So I'm gonna put quotation TBL underscore athletes and then square brackets athlete name, square brackets. And then I'm gonna put that in quotations, close off the brackets and hit okay. And if I've done that right, I should be able to select any of my athletes. So the reason that that works is what I've done is I've taken this cell reference. So if I was to go equals TBL um, square brackets athlete name, all I've done is wrap that in an indirect function. So it takes that and turns it into a named range and then I can reference it in my actual data validation. So now I should be able to pick any athlete and I'll pick one that actually has some value. So we'll start with athlete two equals athlete two. And now we have to write some formulas to actually pull out their data. And I'm going to use a formula called XLOOKUP. It is a newer formula in Excel. And I'll type in equals XLOOKUP. Open that up. And the value that I want to look up is the name of the athlete. And I'm going to keep that the same the whole time. So I'm going to hit F4 there. And then where do I want to look that up? Well, I want to look it up in TBL underscore athletes and then athlete name. Oops. In athlete name. And what do I want to return? I want to do return TBL athletes FMS. So push up. And if it's not found, what do I want to do? I just want to leave it blank. And the match type that I want is an exact match. So I'm going to use zero. And then the search mode doesn't really matter. So I can just close that off and hit enter. And you can see that it's going to pull out the score. Okay. So if I drag that down, it'll pull out the same thing because it hasn't changed anything here. And I just have to remember what my reference is. So instead of now the push up, I want to pull out the overhead squat. So the only thing I have to change in this formula is OHS here, pull out the overhead squat and hit enter. And then I can use this same formula down here. And the only thing I have to change is I want 10 meter. Oh, sorry, counter movement jump, CMJ one, hit enter. And if I drag this down, I want CMJ two, and then I want CMJ best. Hit enter, and I'm gonna do the same thing for 10 meters. What did I call that? Zero to 10, number one. Hit enter, zero to 10, number two. Hit enter, and then zero to 10, best. Hit enter. And then I'll do the same thing for my beep tests. So we want beep level, hit enter, beep shuttle, hit enter, and then beep score. And hit enter. Okay, so those are all of my values and I'm just going to change the values here now on the beep score. So now if I change my athlete name, all of those values should update. So that works really well. We'll put it back to athlete one. 
Now we want to actually pull out the team average and we really only need to pull out the team average for um, sorry for the um, the few tests that we're actually testing okay so we don't need to pull it out for the FMS we just need the team averages for the counter movement jump so really what I can do here is I can just equal that cell and we've already calculated that average so it is in G31 and I know that the next one is equals to J31 and then the last one is just equals to um, M31, okay? So all I've done is just hit an equal sign there and I'm just gonna bold those so that those are values that we know we're kind of looking at. And then the last kind of formula that we wanna do is we wanna actually convert to a Z-score. So the formula for that is going to be the score um, minus the mean over the standard deviation. Okay, so what this is going to look like, it's going to look like equals um, C10 minus D10, and I'm going to wrap that in a bracket, and I'm going to divide that by the standard deviation, which in this case is 2.9 or G32, and hit enter, and you can see now that gives me a score of minus 0.57. So what this means is this particular athlete is minus 0 0.57 standard deviations away from the mean, okay? So what this is gonna do is put everything on the same scale so that when I go to graph this, it all looks the same, okay? So we're gonna do the same formula down here, but it's gonna give us an error because instead of G36, what we want is actually J32. Hit enter. Now, this one looks a little weird because this athlete is 0 0.11 standard deviations over um, the mean, but in this case, being over the mean as a sprint is not good. So we don't we don't want that to be a positive number. We actually want this one to be a negative number. So I'm going to wrap the whole thing in brackets and multiply this by negative one. So that just changes the scale that now negative values are um, more advantageous because they become positive and positive values become negative. So when we go to make the graph, if the athlete is slower than everybody, i.e. they have a larger score, their graph is going to be um, down instead of up. So we want up graphs to be kind of positive. Okay, and now the same thing for the beep test score. I'm just gonna copy um, the sprint formula, or sorry, the counter movement jump, and paste that down. And instead of G40, the spot that we want is actually um, M32, and I'll hit enter. And now you can see that this athlete is minus 1.02 standard deviations below the mean. So that works pretty well. The only issue here now is that in some cases, we're actually going to get um, a value. Okay, so it'll give us an error. So I'm going to wrap the whole formula in an if error and put a bracket there. And then at the end, I'll put a quote or a comma and it'll ask me what I want to do if there is an error. And I just want double quotations for an empty cell. So I'm going to wrap this one in an if error as well. Bracket, comma, double quotations and close the bracket, and then we'll do the same thing for the last one. So this is just a good habit to be into so that when there are errors um, because of zero values, it doesn't show ugly numbers. So now this disappears because there's no Z-score associated with that. So let's go back to athlete two, and the final thing we have to do is just make our graph. So what I want to make the graph out of is I want to make it out of counter movement, which is actually spelt wrong. So I'll just fix the spelling there. But we want to make it out of the counter movement best and the z-score, the 10 meter best and the z-score and the beep test score and the z-score. And all I've done is hold down control while I select those and we're going to go to insert, insert, recommended charts, and we'll go to all charts and we're going to use this clustered column chart and hit okay, and enter this into our 
dashboard here. And I'm just going to change the title of this to Athlete Profile. And I'm going to change the actual columns here. I'm going to make them sort of a light red color. Let's give them a little bit of transparency. And there you go. So now we can see, we'll just bold these so that we can read them a little bit easier. But now you can see that because this athlete is all negative, their graph um, goes negative. But if we were to select an athlete with some positive value, so this athlete is better than the mean in most cases, or all cases actually, their graph is going to be kind of all positive. And now, since we've kind of made all those formulas work and selected all of our ranges correctly, this is a fully dynamic dashboard that no matter which athlete I select, um, it's going to automatically update their testing values with their z-scores and with the athlete with the team averages and the athlete test um, results. The last piece of the puzzle, if we wanted to, we can put a conditional format on the FMS values to highlight them um, with the different colors. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go to the FMS push up and I'll hit conditional formatting, new rule, and um, select cells that, where is it? Cells that contain cell value equal to three. And we want to format that as a green color. So all I've done is new rule format only cells that contain cell value equal to three, hit OK. And you can see now that that's a three, it's going to give it um, a green color. And I can do the same thing a couple more times. So new rule, cell values that contain cell value equal to two. And typically in FMS language, a two would be like a yellow and hit OK. And then I'll do the last one for sort of red or sorry for um, one. So new value cells that contain equal to one and we'll make that sort of like an orange color and hit OK. And then the last one we'll do is um, a zero. So new rule cells that contain equal to zero and we'll make that a red color. So hit OK. So what you'll see is as I change the actual athletes depending on what their FMS score is, the color of that cell is going to change. And then I'm just going to copy this and right click and I'm only going to paste the formatting. So what that's done is it's pasted those same rules onto that next cell so that all of the same coloring applies. And that's how we'd finish off this dashboard. If we wanted, we can add a logo somewhere. But really, this was just an example of how you can create a simple dashboard pretty quickly and we can start to display testing results to our athletes. So I hope this video helps you out. If it does, please like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you click the bell notification. And if you want to connect with me on social media, you can find me at DSM Strength on Twitter or Instagram or at my website dsmstrength.com. I have a lot of these sheets for sale and if you have any questions or anything, just post in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So I will see you in the next video.